Cam Calvary friends, welcome back. Hey, before we get started, right now, I want you to think about how you're feeling and show me with your face how you're feeling right now. You might be worried. You might be excited to hear what we have to say today. You might be just happy. Hmm, you might be a little tired. Show me. Oh, that reminds me of a song. It's called No Matter What I'm Facing. Enjoy. Woke up this morning feeling kind of blue. A little sad, but I know just what to do. Whoa, oh, oh, whoa, oh, oh. I have learned that I can go to Jesus. He lifts me up whenever I need it. Whoa, oh. We have been learning about how God helps us to be brave. And that's our Bible point today. So whenever you hear me say, God helps us to be brave, I want you to put your hands on your hips, puff out your chest and go, we're brave. God does help us to be brave. We're, we're brave. brave. Enjoy this next song called Thankful. To think about the goodness of the Lord He gives me everything I need and so much more So I just want to lift my hands And say that I love Him I just want to lift my heart in praise And I want to be thankful I want to be grateful I want to remember everything That the Lord has done I want to be thankful I want to be grateful I want to be I want to be I want to be I like to think about the goodness of the Lord He gives me everything I need and so much more So I just want to lift my hands and say that
I am thankful that Raquette, our flying squirrel, is our Bible memory buddy. How much do you know about Raquette, the flying squirrels? I'm going to challenge you with a this or that challenge. Here you're going to hear two fun things about flying squirrels. And you decide which is true. The noise that flying squirrels make is either a barking noise, like a dog, really fast, or a chirping noise, like a bird. You decide. Flying squirrels make a barking noise or a chirping noise. Are you ready? Drum roll! <laughs> the answer is a chirping noise. <laughs> they make lots of squeaks and fun sounds. You're going to hear that noise, what it really sounds like, with this video of your Bible memory buddy, Rocket the Flying Squirrel. There, my fabulous friends, it's me, Rocket, the flying squirrel. I hope you're having a great day. I know I am. I mean, normally I'd be having a nice nap right now, so I could be up gliding around at night with my friends. I'm nocturnal, you know, that means I sleep during the day and glide around at night. But there's no way I want to miss hanging out with you. I'm so happy to see you. It makes me want to chirp with delight. <laughs> Are you excited too? I hope so. How do you show your excitement? With cheers and shouts? Okay, let's hear it. On the count of three, give me your best cheer. One, two, three. You do sound pretty excited. Yippee! We're all excited and awake and thankful to be here together. I've got to tell you, flying squirrels like to be heard. We make all kinds of squeaks saying clicks and chirps and other noises when we communicate. We sound a lot like this. God gave us, flying squirrels, the ability to talk to each other. We send messages through calls and patterns that probably sound a little random to you. But we get the message loud and clear. The noises we make tell our friends where we are, if danger is near, and when things are just fine. Our voices can make a quiet forest come alive with noises. God gave me a chirpy little voice to keep me and my friends safe and connected. He knew it would be important for us to be able to talk to each other. God knew exactly what we flying squirrels would need. And he knows exactly what you need too. I sometimes hear people like you use your voices to praise God and thank him for what he's done for you. <laughs> That's wonderful. But you don't have to use your voice to say thank you to God. You can do it silently too. Wanna try? Without saying a word, thank God for something in your life. Just think. Thanks God for... Then picture something or someone you're thankful for. Ready? Thanks God for... Amen. In the Bible, God's people, the Israelites, thank God for helping them escape Egypt and enter the land he had promised to give them. They built a memorial out of stones as a way to remember and say, thanks, God. What about you? I'm sure moving to a new home or school or team isn't always easy, but God will give you the courage you need to bravely move forward when life changes. In the Bible book of Joshua, chapter one, verse nine, it says, be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid or discouraged, for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. God is with you. When you remember how he helped you in the past, you'll find the strength and courage you need 
to bravely face new things that come our way. Did you get that message? I said, thanks, God. Oh, look at the time. I gotta fly. Thanks for chirping. I mean, chatting with me. No matter what's happening around you, remember this. God helps us be brave. Raquet is helping us remember our Bible memory verse. It comes out of the Bible, God's true love story for us. Did you know that the Bible was originally written in three languages? Now it is written in well over hundreds of languages. Our Bible memory verse comes from Joshua 1 verse 9. It says, be strong and courageous. Do not be discouraged, for the Lord will guide your path wherever you go. Enjoy this next video called, I Am Trusting You. Today in our Bible story, we're learning that Joshua was leading all the Israelites to that promised land. It wasn't always easy, and God told them, God helps us to be brave. We're brave, Joshua and the Israelites would say. <sighs> they came across 
a huge river called the Jordan River, and there they camped, and they were waiting for a message. Let's read exactly what the message says in the Bible. It says, early in the morning, Joshua and the Israelites were camping before they crossed over. After three days, the officers in the camp went around and said, be ready. The Ark of the Covenant, that's that big box holding all of God's special things, is going to come. Don't go near it, but be ready. The next morning, God is going to do some great things. So the Israelites and Joshua waited till the next morning. They didn't go to the Ark of the Covenant. And the priests came carrying the Ark. They stood in front of the river. And guess what happened? I'm going to read exactly what it says in the Bible because this is so cool. It comes from Joshua 3. Tell the priests who are carrying the Ark of the Covenant, when you reach the edge of the waters of Jordan, go and stand in the river. Joshua said to the Israelites, come here and listen to the word of the Lord your God. This is how you will know that the living God is among you and that he will certainly drive out before you the Canaanites and all the others that didn't want us to have this land. So the priests put their feet in the water and they could see up above in the river that the water was stopping. Soon there was dry land to get across this raging river. The priests went in and they stood right in the middle of the river that was no longer there. And all the people, the nation of Israelite, got to cross over. When they reached the other side, the priests continued on and got to the other side. Then something really cool happens too. God told Joshua to get 12 men. Go back in the middle, get 12 stones and come and bring them to the other side. So those 12 brave men went across, picked up some big stones and went back to the other side. They laid them as a monument, always to remember what God has done for them. <sighs> God tells us to be brave. We're brave. And in fact, it says that those stones are still there today in the Bible. How cool is that as a memorial? So when people go, they can see those stones and know that God takes care of them and God helps them to be brave. We're brave. I sent you a picture this week and it's a picture of those 12 stones. I thought that was really cool. You could put that on your bedpost, in your room, just to remind you that God wants you to be brave and helps us to be brave. Be brave! That memorial helps us remember things. We have memorials in America too that help us to remember our past. Maybe you even have memorials in your room that help you remember some place that you went, something that you got when you went to a special place, um, something special that happened to you. I know when I was baptized as an infant, my mom saved the dress that I wore. I look at that as a memorial that God was with me and I was baptized and that my parents wanted me to grow up and know who Jesus was. While you're thinking of that, I want you to take your hands and cross over, take a big breath in, big breath out, and I just want you to listen to what I have to say. When God's people bravely marched into the promised land, they had to pause and thank God, even though they didn't know exactly what was waiting for them. Thanking God for what he's done for you already is a great way to remind yourself that God isn't finished with you yet. God loved you in the past and God loves you now. God was with you in the past and he's with you now. God helped you to be brave in the past and he'll help you be brave now. So thank God, not just for what he's done for you but what he's going to do for you too. And thank God for Jesus.
God loves giving good gifts to his children. And if you know and love Jesus, you're one of those chosen kids. God's people could be brave because they knew who was with them. And God's walking with you too. Thank you, God. Camp Calvary kids, I will see you next week and I'm so excited to share the next message with you.